Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is well. Um, we have a guest speaker today, so um, I'm just going to run through the ground rules real quick. I'm not going to uh, put up our um, presentation, but just um, know that um, you have to um, try not to use your last name when you're doing this if you're a patient. Um, we're going to do it a little different. We're going to um, highlight the speaker and the presentation. If you have any um, any questions, please put them in the chat or raise your hand. We will probably go through the presentation first and then we'll we'll turn it over um, for questions, okay? Um, so I'm gonna, uh, our presenter today is from the National Kidney Registry. This is EJ Temez, and he's like the senior guru for the microsites. <laughs> so okay. take it away, EJ. Well, thank you, Pat. Thank you for in the invite and I appreciate it. Uh, Excited to share what the Microsite program is all about today with you guys. Um, and I want to welcome Sebastian. Sebastian is my colleague, right? He's also on the call from NKR. Um, real quick, I want to share with you guys my own personal story. You know, why am I here, right? Um, 2016, I found out my, that my younger brother uh, was already on dialysis, right? Um, it, he was having a real tough time because I found out that he was developing gout. Most of you guys probably know what gout is. Um, anyhow, uh, we decided to go to a transplant center to add him to the deceased donor list, right, here in Texas. Um, and when we go to the transplant center, this is where I'm going to elaborate a little bit, that don't ever take it for granted. Don't ever take it automatic that people know that they can be living donors. And I'm going to explain to you why, right? So when I'm waiting in the weight room at that transplant center, uh, my brother is getting checked up by the nephrologist to be added to the deceased donor list, right? At that point, I was very sad and I was looking down on the floor and what I call uh, this nurse is an angelical nurse, right? Because she walks right towards me. I was the only person at the, at the waiting area and she looks at me and she says, sir, what's wrong with you? And I automatically look at her. I said, ma'am, the problem is I'm waiting on my brother and I just see his health keep deteriorating by the hour, right? And there's nothing I can do for him. Well, she looked at me and she says, well, you look healthy enough to be a donor. Uh, immediately my eyes went wide open, right? I thought she was kidding me because I thought she was trying to literally kill me. I thought that only deceased people could be living, could be donors, right? That was my fault, right? Because later on, as she laughed about it, she said, come with me. I'm going to show you how you can become a living donor if you wish. Sure enough, you know, that happened in November. And in March 1st of 2017, I donated a kidney to my brother, my younger brother. And I won't go into details, but he's doing great. He's back to work full time. He's working a lot of overtime hours. And anyway, my story is just make sure when you start sharing your story, and I'm going to show you how, don't take it for granted. People may not know that they can become a living donor. You know, there's a lot of people out there that don't really know. All they know is about signing off on their driver's license for deceased donation. But a lot of people don't know about living donation. Okay, so that's the end of my story. Okay, we're going to jump into the deck here. How to find a living kidney donor. Mayo uh, Clinic, Jacksonville. Again, thank you for the invite. Uh, and we're going to go through here. What? Who can donate, right? Number one, who can be a donor? Okay, there's a minimum age to donate. This varies center by center. Mayo have their own their own age. Uh, but again, it could be some centers go 18 years old, some centers go 21, some others go up to 23. Um, again, I'll let Mayo discuss that, or you can talk to your uh, coordinator when you have time. But blood type, donors can be any blood type. Here, there's another, this is another piece of information you need to know about. In the past, you had to be a specific blood type in order to donate to a loved one. That's no longer the case. Thanks to the National Kidney Registry and the matching program and the standard voucher, you can actually donate to another person while your loved one receives a kidney with no problems, okay? What's the, what does the health need to be for that potential donor? Donors must be in good physical and mental health. That's for sure, right? BMI, what is BMI? The weight of that potential donor. 
there is a require, requirement for BMI. Most centers are about that 35 BMI. Again, it depends on a center by center basis, okay? Um, any kind of diseases that the potential donor may have, we always, of course, the donor, like we said, they have to be in good mental and, and, and physical health. But again, there may be other conditions that may prevent them from donating. What, like high blood pressure, diabetes, et cetera. Now, understanding living kidney donation. What is it? It's an, indiv an individual that donates a kidney for transplant transplantation to another person, right? When can it happen? Once the medical elig eligibility is confirmed for that potential donor, right? Here's the key part. The surgery is scheduled when it's convenient for the donor. And again, this is also thanks to the NKR and the transplant centers that are working with us because now that potential, that donor could schedule their own surgery depending on what's more flexible for them, right? Uh, where can it take place? This is another key part. If you have a family member that would like to donate to you that lives, let's say in New York or in California or in Texas, they could actually go to an NKR participant uh, center. They could get worked up and tested and finally even donate at that center on your behalf. So that's very important to know as well, okay? Uh, why is it important? It's minimal risk, it's kidney health maintaining, donor assistant, and it helps a person regain their life back, okay? We, I know how, what my brother went through and I could imagine you know, how hard it is to go through dialysis and be out there and that's how we're here for, we're gonna be able to help you Go through your journey on finding how you can find a living donor. Okay. This is what a microsite looks like. Uh, this is a young man, by the way, uh, that recently received his kidney. Um, and he did an awesome story, Oliver, about his whole you know, journey. He added awesome photos. If you look at here, this is expandable. This story is not only two paragraphs long, you can up, upload up to 2,500 characters on each of these sections, okay? So the potential donor can read a full story about your, you know, your journey. Uh, so that's, that's why it's important to know that this is your portal. The minute you're, you get a, a approved to have a starter microsite, that's when you start sharing your link, okay? You also get, by the way, 250 business cards. What are business cards? I'll go into more detail later on, but a business card is simply your name in it, the reason why you're sharing your business card, which is for people to jump on your NKR uh, URL link and, uh, and read about your story, right? Read about your journey, look at your photos, your, look, be inspired by your story for them to potentially get tested and eventually hopefully donate on your behalf. This QR code, by the way, if they ever scan this QR code themselves, they can immediately go directly to the URL story or your page, your microsite page. It's free. It's a free personalized website. It's, I already mentioned, it's a site that can be shared through email, social media, and Facebook, and any other types of social media. And again, you'll receive 250 business cards it's a way for potentially donors to easily and confidentially register to be your donor. And again, it's a platform that provides you with the tools to succeed. And this is the key part right here. You will have a personal coach that will help you through your journey. And I'm gonna get into details about the coaches that we have within NKR. So you learn about a little bit about their story, but the coaches have gone through this journey before. They're either recipients, or they being champions to a family member or even a donor, okay? Here's the difference between starter and custom site. I already mentioned that once your center sends you an invite and you decide to activate your starter site and you accept and click that link that I'll show you in a minute, you automatically are already uploaded in the system you're gonna have, you automatically you have your name and age. You'll be, like I said, you can share it on social media and you'll have your business cards. And again, you'll be linked to the transplant center's donor intake, okay? Uh, what is a custom site, okay? A custom site 
is actually when this gets uh, transferred from starter to custom because you decided to add some items to your story and you want to customize your story, make it more compelling, then you decide to add photos to your story and you decide to actually, again, edit, start working on your, on your uh, journey, your text. And again, you're not going to be doing this by yourself but because by this time, the coach has already reached out to you to offer their help, okay? They're gonna be able to help you through this by giving you some uh, leads, giving you some pointers on what's better to put on your story. You can start by, you know, you got your own story and you can write your story, but the coach will proofread your story to verify that what you're adding is gonna be uh, very meaningful for people to be moved by it and potentially donate on your behalf, okay? Now, this is very important. This is the link that uh, if you guys, if you received a, an invite from the transplant center and you open that, you're going to have a QR code, okay? And this QR code is going to open this page. This is a self-registration link, okay? Uh, the campaign code is going to be pre-populated with Mayo Florida's uh, campaign number. And then all you have to do is put your name, last name, email, phone number, and all the information in here to verify that you're registering for the microsites, okay? If you see a poster out there, a mail, that's got a code in it that says microsites, you can scan that as well and automatically self-register for the microsite program. This is what the email that you will be receiving would look like. Congratulations, we have confirmed your registration. Your starter website to help you find a kidney donor is now active. To view your site, you can click here, and here's a key part. To work on your personalized site, click on this link. That's where you're gonna be able to add your own text and your own photos to your story. Again, don't feel uh, uh, that you're gonna be by yourself, that nobody's gonna help you. No, the coach is gonna be right there with you on your site to help you through that process, okay? This is what that link, that page looks like once you open the link. This is where you're gonna be able to post your own story. Uh, there's two sections of it. Again, please write your story here. Please write why you need a kidney. And again, the coaches are already very, very experienced in this process. So they're gonna be right beside you to help you through it, okay? So don't panic the body. This is very important too. I wanted to share a little bit of our, about our growth, right? If you can see here, we've grown quite rapidly, okay, in the microsite program. We have now up to 2,500 microsites, okay, throughout the US. And, and you can see here back in Q1, which is again, January timeframe of 2019, we only had eight microsites. This is how far we, can, we have gone in the last few years. And we keep growing as we speak, we are 2,600 uh, microsites already, okay. This is very important too. Um, what, what do I need? Who do I need on my, on my team, right? In order to continue to do that, an effective search for a living donor. Um, again, every person's case is different. If you have the support system from your family, this is the key role that we always encourage people to have, okay? The patient, of course, will be in the middle. You have a caretaker, you know, which could be your, your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter. Um, of course, you'll have your coach automatically once you start your microsite. So the coach plays a key role uh, on your journey. You have an administrator that actually takes care of all your, you know, all your medical, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, documentation. When do I have my next appointment, et cetera. And then you have champions, right? The champions here, you could have one or three or more. You know, the more you have, the better, of course. But if you only have one, that's fine. Again, sometimes a caretaker will act as a champion and that's not an issue, right? The champion is simply a person that's gonna be able to help you target those potential donors and have them understand what it is to be a living donor, okay? And we'll go into more detail what a champion is in a minute, okay? Their key role again is to find donor candidates. Uh, I'll mention this now, but it is very important that the champion if it's a, a relative or a friend or a family member, that they have already an answer to the question, 
have you been tested to be a donor for that person already or for that patient? Because again, if that if your champion is somebody that has been disqualified due to pre-existing conditions, that's fine. That's going to be the answer. When somebody asks the question, hey, uh, I heard your dad, your father needs a kidney, but uh, have you thought about donating yourself? Well, you have to have an answer already. So the, mo the more you think about it and you already have a response, the better you're going to be. And that person is going to understand why you cannot donate to your father. Okay. And this is the slide that I always brag about. <laughs> this is all of our coaches, right? Um, I'll give you a quick rundown. Terry Bennett, she's a champion to, uh, to her, her son. Uh, she was successfully found a living donor kidney for her son. Brian Green is a recipient, a patient himself. Tara Foster is actually a double donor. She donated not only her kidney, but she donated her liver as well. And she's got a very unique story and we always get inspired by the Tara story, okay? Debbie herself, Debbie is a champion to her husband. Her husband received a living donor kidney. And again, she did an amazing job and they've been doing this for quite a while, now, right? Uh, Marie is of course married to Brian and Marie also acted as a champion for Brian and was very successful through that process, right? Mike Saylor is another amazing story. Uh, he is a recipient himself. And by the way, when he looked in the inner circle within the family, friends, nobody stepped up and donate and, and tried to donate to, on his behalf or they were disqualified. He actually received a living donor from an old classmate from high school. So very inspiring story, okay? And Luis Aguilera, our latest coach as well, he's got also an amazing story and he had to overcome a lot of hurdles to go through the process of becoming a recipient, okay? As a living kidney recipient. Who do champions and patients reach out to? This is very important, the circle of influence, right? First of all, you're always gonna go within your family, right? That's just the way we always communicate, right? The, the people, your brothers, your sisters, your uh, siblings, that's the people that you're gonna reach out to first. And what are the questions that I'm gonna ask them? I'll go into the next slide, but you always reach out within your family first, then your friends, and then you go to your acquaintances and finally the strangers, right? Because remember, you can hand out those business cards to anybody you want. You can take a photo of it, upload it to Facebook or social media, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. And people could start sharing that photo within their friends. And guess what? You're now out there everywhere. And people would eventually you know, look at it. And if they're moved by your story, they could start a workup process, okay? Here's what I was talking about earlier. What are the questions that I'm gonna ask my, my, within my family members, right? You're gonna be kind of direct to your family, right? Because you already have that relationship with them where you're close to them. Would you be willing to be tested to see if you're medically qualified to donate, right? That's what you would tell a family member. Now, the next, the friends, right? What am I gonna tell my friends? Well, how am I gonna ask my friends? I'm asking all my friends whether they are willing to be tested to see if they're medically qualified to donate. And then is that something you would consider, right? You're not as direct as you were with your family members, right? Then acquaintances, you're a little softer with the acquaintances, right? I am looking for a kidney donor. Do you know anybody who may be willing to be tested to see if they're medically qualified to donate, okay? And as you go all the way to the strangers, of course, you're going to be a lot more indirect with them, right? You're going to say, I I'm looking for a kidney donor. Can you help me find a living donor by sharing my story? You're not asking for them to donate. You're asking them if they're willing to share your story. And by them doing that, they're already helping. Okay. Methods of communication. Okay. Uh, the coach is going to help you through this process and they're going to share a lot of different methods to communicate your need of a kidney. Again, you can ask people directly, phone calls, text messages. You can, of course, share your microsite, social media. Uh, there's people out there that, again, they're willing to spend all that money and they do television ads, they do uh, banners, they do, uh, you know, uh, 
anything out there that of course is going to cost them more money but a lot of times not putting the i mean putting the money in there doesn't get to better results is how consistent you are through your journey right uh, in my local hometown there's a guy that put a sign in the back of his windshield on his pickup truck and he had results by doing that right he put his microsite photo in there and that you know there was people that went into his microsite and they're going to start reading about his story right Again, there's people that do T-shirts, apparel, caps, you name it, right? Bumper stickers. Um, again, we talked about it already, but how do you share your story? We talk, text the link, hand out the cards. This is, again, another example of a business card. Um, always share your cards. And again, if you ever run out of those cards, so those 250 business cards, the NKR will replenish those cards free of charge. You just gotta let your coach know, hey, I ran out of the cards, I already handed them, out, handed them out, can you please replenish them so I can continue to share my business cards among my community, okay? Keep a list of all potential donors. This is very important. Your champion or your administrator can help you through this process. When somebody goes, and, and this is something that I failed to mention during my story, but when I, when the nurse told me that uh, I was, uh, you know, I was going to complete the questionnaire to potentially see if I qualified to be a living donor to my brother, she literally told me, she said, you have two options. You can either disclose it to your brother, or you can keep it to yourself so that you can let him know once you get approved, right? I opted for the later one. I didn't want to provide my brother with any false hopes before I was approved by the Senate, right? So that's why I don't feel like uh, if the center, if you ever ask your center, are there any potential donors that are coming through? The center is not going to be able to disclose that information with you because HIPAA rules are out there for a reason to protect the potential donor, right? So what I would do is if you have people that are disclosing to you that they want to be your living donors, Keep a list, right? Put the name of the person, where you found them, the status, the last time you contacted them or your champion contact, you know, contact them. And the next steps, right? This will be your own list. Uh, and again, this will be your own information. You don't need to ask the transplant center for that information because more than enough time, they're not gonna be able to provide that to you because they're protecting that potential donor, okay? Talk to a living donor mentor. This is an amazing program. Before I came to the NKR 100%, I spent about two years as a living donor mentor. What is a living donor mentor is? What is that? You know, what does it entail? It's through the National Kidney Don Donation Organization. And a donor mentor is simply a person that is, you know, contacted through the transplant center. Once the potential donor accepts to talk to them, that person is going to be able to walk that potential donor through the journey of what it is to be a living donor. Just like the coaches, in this case recipients, the donor mentors are people that have already donated either a kidney or a liver themselves. So it's very important that if you tell your potential donors, please do not opt out of talking to a donor mentor or donor connect, okay? Donor search tips, okay? Potential champions should have a clear reason why they cannot donate. We already talked about that a little while ago. Again, never say you have a donor until the surgery is done. Why do I say that? There have been cases where people say, hey, I'm work I'm I already started the questionnaire and actually I already completed it. I might be already uh, uh, accepted and approved to donate. Well, guess what? You may tell your other potential donors, hey, I already have a donor, so don't continue the process because this person is gonna donate to me. What happens if later on that person, for some reason, either does decides not to do it or they, they found a medical uh, issue that they may not let them donate? So don't ever say you have a donor until your kidney is on your body already, right? The more potential donors you have on your pool, the better chances you'll have of receiving a living kidney donor, okay? You can talk to someone, you cannot talk to someone into donating, so don't ever try. That's very, very important to know. 
you may want to convince somebody within your family and say, hey, by the way, this is there's not a lot of risk. If somebody wants to do it, most of the time, 99% of the time, they're going to jump on and do it, right? And again, that's why donor mentors are out, are out there, right? To describe what it is to be a living donor after donation and through the process. But a lot of people, if they don't get that feeling immediately, you don't, you're not going to be able to convince them. It's very hard to do that, okay? So move to the next person, okay? Anyone could be a potential donor, so don't rule people out. This is very important because we may see someone out there that, oh, his BMI doesn't look that well, uh, or he may have a little bit of diabetes or taking medication. Well, that's why the transplant medical team is out there. They're professionals. They're the ones that work up people, and they're the ones that will actually either rule people out or accept a person as a potential donor. We're not qualified or a person, you know, us people, we're not qualified to rule people out. That's the medical team that does that, okay? Why compatibility is no longer important. This is very important for everybody to understand. And I relate back to my case again, my own personal story. When I went to the transplant center, honestly, I, I even said it, I said, I'm hoping I'm a, a match to my brother because that will be another sign that I need to do this. Of course, I was very naive at the time. I didn't even know the National Kidney Registry existed. But believe me, compatibility is no longer an issue because now we do this pair donation. We do the voucher donation, which is the best way to go about a living donation, right? For someone you love, which is, by the way, it's a way to limit, I mean, take away the issues about, oh, I only can, I only have a window to be a living donor. Again, I'm a school teacher, for example, and I can only donate in the summer. Well, guess what? That can be arranged, okay? That person can actually donate in the summer. And once the patient is ready and approved, guess what? They can receive that kidney during the fall, right? Or in the spring of next year. So the issue about the calendar issues for the potential donor, that doesn't apply anymore, okay? Um, again, historically, uh, patients historically needed to find a compatible donor, which could be difficult since 40% of donors are incompatible. We already talked about that. The NKR has essentially eliminated the donor recipient incompatibility problem with over 90% of incompatible pair transplants. Uh, this is, again, a lot of technical data, but simply all you have to understand is your loved one doesn't have to be a match to you, okay? Doesn't mean that you don't need a match. You do need a match, but by the loved one putting in a kidney to the pool with an NKR, you, that you will be pulling out another kidney from the NKR that's compatible to you, okay? The voucher program, okay? This is also very important to understand the voucher program, I already talked about it a little bit, is simply when you have a loved one that, wanna don that wants to donate to you, but they're not compatible, they can simply donate to a, a, another person with an NKR, and then you later on will receive your own uh, compatible kidney. And by the way, when this happens, that, that loved one will donate on your behalf, but then they can name up to five family members as backup vouchers, backup family vouchers. Let's say in the case you were not able to, or you received that kidney from somebody else, or you were not able to, uh, to redeem your voucher, well, that person that donated, they have backup voucher. So if a loved one within their family member ever needed a kidney and you never redeemed it, that loved one will receive that kidney instead of you, okay? Because they are backup vouchers. Again, why it helps, it reduces the risk that you will lose your donor. We already talked about that. Simplifies the scheduling. We talked about that. It shortens the wait times because your voucher holders are prioritized over per recipients, okay? Vouchers always take precedence within NKR. It provides an opportunity for a better match for the voucher holder patient to the Kidney for Life program. And I'll talk a little bit about Kidney for Life in a minute. Uh, donor Shield. It's very important that you always share with potential donors the donor protections that come with donor shield, okay? Uh, just look at the first one right here. If your loved one that wanted to donate on your behalf or your friend, 
if they were to be out for work because of their kidney donation or transplant, they can actually get, of course, they need proof of, uh, of uh, employment, right? But up to $2,000 per week reimbursement for being out of work, okay? They could also get reimbursed for travel and dependent care. Kidney prioritization, this is so key and important because when they donate through the NKR, if they ever, God forbid, which is very slim chances to occur, if they ever needed a kidney, they will be prioritized to, re to receive a living donor kidney themselves, okay? Because they already donated. Uh, again, voucher donation, remote donation, donor connect. We already talked about the other ones. Um, very important. Your donors, this is another one I always emphasize, your potential donors can actually get phlebotomists go to their house to pull their blood. They don't even have to drive to the Quest lab diagnostics or to get that blood test you know, uh, kit and pull the blood for them just to be pre-qualified to become a living donor. So it's very convenient for the potential donor, right? The kidney for life. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, this is very important for everybody. Uh, again, the chances for you to receive the best match possible are gonna be through the NKR process because NKR is the largest pool of kidneys that are out there in the world, basically, right? We have the largest pool of potential donors and recipients. So that turns into the better chances to match a person between a donor and a recipient. Um, again, what does the Kidney for Life take? It reduces the risk of de novo antibodies. It lowers the risk of rejection, less risk of gra graft failure. And in, in just one word, what it is, this is, kind of like it's called high resolution testing, but it's based on DNA matching, right? In the old days, the only type of matching we knew was blood type, right? You always talk about, oh, are you the same blood type as I am? That means that you could be my donor, right, eventually. Well, it's not only about blood type anymore. It's also about DNA matching, okay? And again, these are some resources I wanted to share, very important. This one on the bottom left, the findakidney.org. It's very, it's great information. You can jump on that uh, website and actually learn about testimonials from people that actually receive their living donation through a microsite. So you can get inspired by it. You can read what they did right, you know, what they learned through the process. You also have all of the coaches' stories in here that you can read about your particular coach. A lot of information here. We talked about Donor Shield. This is also very important because anytime you find someone that is interested in donating, you can provide them some peace of mind by sharing the donor shield protections, okay? We already talked about Kidney for Life. And finally, of course, our National Kidney Registry main portal or website, right? With that, that's the last slide. And we open it up for questions. Pat, you let me know how we want to handle that if we go through the chat or how you like to take care of that. Yeah, um, you guys can put your questions in the chat, raise your hand, or you can um, unmute yourself and ask a question. I have a question regarding the kidney for life. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the question is, um, centers that are associated with the National Kidney Registry, do they all use the kidney for life DNA sequencing system, or is it just a select few? Because I'm not sure in Florida that the kidney for life exists. That's a great question, and, uh, and thank you for bringing that up. And of course, I'll let, of course, the medical team elaborate. But what I can tell you is there are cent certain centers in the nation that participate with the Kidney for Life program, okay? Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, or even Sebastian, if, uh, if Mayo Florida is part of Kidney for Life. Actually, um, Christine, can you maybe um, unmute? Do you, you may know. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can do kidney for life. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Yeah, we can hear oh. you. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. great. So, so that that's that's the response. You know, okay. they participate. And again, what it comes down to is simply a cheek swab, right, from the recipient side and the donor side. And what it is is that's what that means is you're going to have the best compatibility possible. The testing that gets you to the best compatibility testing outcome. Okay. So the next question I have is that I, I did because I'm on the list at Mayo and I asked my nurse coordinator and they said that, that Mayo does not participate in the kidney for life. 
So if they do participate in Kidney for Life, how do I get tested for my, or me and or my donors get tested for with the cheek swab? Do, does Mayo send that out to us if we request it or how does that work? Uh, I'll uh, go ahead. Yeah, Chris. gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. Once you're listed and you're enrolled, if you have an uh, approved donor and you're enrolled into the National Kidney Registry into this paired exchange program, we will um, have cheek swab sent to you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Only through the paired exchange, not through a direct donation? Correct. The direct donation is going through our center. So the Kidney for Life program is a part of the National Kidney Registry. Well, no, my donor going through the National Kidney Registry at the designated center, Mayo was my designated center, but they're doing it through the National Kidney Registry. So they have the donor protection shield. So your donor so would have to participate in a swap. I mean, right. maybe I'm not understanding your um, statement fully. Um, so your donor would have to participate in a swap to to be able to to participate in the paired exchange. If your donor and you are both coming to Mayo Clinic in Florida for a directed donation, you're not automatically enrolled into the swap program. Okay, does that make sense? She's, she's doing so. She is doing the the testing through the National Kidney Registry at Mayo as my designated center. Is that a difference? Even if it's gonna, if it's directed donation through the kidney registry, uh, it still doesn't qualify for the for the epaulette testing for the um, cheek swab. kidney for life, the cheek swab. If you're donating direct and you're both at the same center, having your surgeries at the same place, you're not typically enrolled into the National Kidney Registry. If your donor is having a workup at another center, there is something called like a remote direct where a donor can, like EJ said, have a workup and everything that's convenient to them at another place. You have everything done at a center that's closer to you um, and that can happen, but that's, that's called remote directed. Um, you know, with the registry and the paired exchange, there are the cheek swabs involved for the kidney for life. I can, I'm happy, I, we can talk offline as okay. well. Um, and I can answer any maybe more targeted questions. And if I don't have them, get those answers directly for you. Um, let me just see. Is this Lisa? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, perfect. Gotcha. You sent a message in the portal, so I don't have to get a hold of you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Christine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Great question. Anybody else? What do you want to ask about the voucher? The voucher. How you activate the voucher? Oh, yeah. So the voucher, how does the, the voucher get activated? If somebody were to do a donation via the voucher system mm -hmm. and uh, we give it to my sister, who's um, uh, uh, Mayo, right? Mm -hmm. You're on Mayo, how does she activate that voucher? Yeah, that's a great question. So what happens is, if let's say you're the donor for your sister, right? I'm just mm -hmm. pulling here, right? When, when you end up donating that voucher towards your sister, immediately that voucher becomes redeemable, right? That means that your sister is already uploaded to the NKR system. And now she is only out there to find a match, right? Uh, and she's out there in the system already uploaded and NKR is working on finding a match to your sister, right? Now there's a lot of things that play, key, are key players in this uh, you know, search, right? Number one is whether your sister is highly sensitized or not, right? If it's the first kidney, more than likely she's not, right? But there are patients out there that are going with their second or third kidney, right? So again, a lot of things come into play, but number one is, that are they highly sensitized are they you know what type of blood you know the blood type is another key aspect but people ask how long does it take right it's usually again an average for a person that's not highly sensitized and it's a simple to match blood type it usually takes between four to eight uh, weeks you know two three months and you'll receive that you know that offer for that uh, potential donor for your sister after you have donated right Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the one question I have is if it, if it were the voucher were redeemed and would she get a phone call because she's in Miami, but she's on the list in Jacksonville in Florida. So would she get a phone call and be given, you know, 10 hours to get up there or how does that well, work? Yeah. Believe me, this is going to be a lot more planning around it. And, and you guys in the medical team, can, you know, can jump in anytime. But when, when we do this, you, you'll get some, 
a heads up on it, right? Because yeah, typically with offers, you get at least, you know, a, 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 typically it's minimum of two weeks. Sometimes it's five weeks notice. There's okay. It is pre-planned. So we do call you, let you know, hey, we have an offer. Um, these are the things that we need to do. This is the blood kits that we have to have drawn. Here's your pre-op appointment. So, and we'll work you through, you know, each step of the process. Exactly. Right. Thank you. Anybody else? These are great questions, by the way. So, so there's a question in the chat. If I have been approved for a transplant by Mayo, um, oops. <laughs> okay, now I got it. That was the one prior, right? I think. No. And so I'm if I've approved, them. yeah. So no, I don't. I don't think we did this one. If I've been approved for a transplant by Mayo, am I already registered on Kidney for Life? Sure. So you have to have an approved donor again to enter into the registry. So if you have any specific direct questions about your your case and your registrations, feel free to reach out to your care teams, your pre coordinator, myself, even at the you know the nephrology team, um, saying that you have questions about parent exchange. I'm happy to reach out to you specifically as well. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, unfortunately, I, I teach school, and so I, I, I didn't get in on the beginning of this. Uh, so I'm asking, uh, if I go to this website that's listed on my screen, can I find out what maybe I've missed, or are you going to repeat this? We don't have a problem, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, but this was recorded, or we can actually send the deck out if you guys are fine with that. I mean, let yeah. me know. Mm -hmm, right. So, so if you want the if you want the PowerPoint or a PDF of the PowerPoint, you can send me a portal message. But we also okay. are we have a um, YouTube channel within the Mayo YouTube channel, and we're starting a playlist for our patient education. Um, this recording will be added to that um, okay. probably within okay. the next week. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, All right, any other questions? And and by the way, like I mentioned earlier, Pat, if we ever want to do one in Spanish, I offer it up as well, because I know there's, you know, people out there that rather have it in Spanish. I'm, I'm bilingual, by the way. Yeah, and we will do that. We will um, get uh, get you to do that so we can do at least a Spanish recording, if not a live one. We'll see how much interest we have in a live one. but. Um, definitely recording so that patients can go out anytime and see that. Awesome. And for um, everybody out there that has already started a microsite, um, your sites are fantastic. You know, I definitely <laughs> encourage those who haven't share your story. Like EJ said, get the word out and let us know if you have any questions. Definitely. I, I'm also very, very excited to see a lot more people coming in through the microsite program for, for your center. This is awesome. Yeah, I think you gave us a count earlier. What was yeah. the count already? More than 30 already. More yeah. than 30. So <laughs> this is that's really cool. It's only been a couple of weeks or less than two weeks, right? So this is yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Now I think that Bernie is on and Bernie um actually he and his wife did the NKR. So Bernie, do you want to give a quick update on your story? Kind of tell people what you went through when you did the NKR? That would be great. Uh not a problem. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh I went through the uh, process of getting on the national registry uh, and then for a couple of years, and then um, we found out about the paid exchange program at Mayo. And uh, my wife was the individual that actually signed up to be tested. And thankfully, uh, well, she was actually rejected at a different location, but she was accepted at Mayo Clinic. And then in turn, we actually, uh, so instead of having to wait, you know, the five to six years or whatever it was in order to get a cadaver kidney, from the time my wife was accepted, we went through one chain where uh, it actually fell through just before I was to be the recipient. Um, then, uh, matter of fact, it was Christine that actually I worked with and she was fantastic. Uh, we actually uh, found another individual and I was the first person in that chain to be able to receive a kidney. My wife was the caregiver or care person that took care of me. And she actually uh, donated a kidney um, approximately two or three months after 
I had received mine. So uh, in essence, it worked out fine. Uh, it worked out great for uh, with Mayo Clinic. And a matter of fact, I just had my testing for my fourth year post transplant this past week and got my results today. And thank God everything is fine. So I encourage everybody, I encourage everybody to, uh, who's been on the list for a long, long time and needs to get a kidney, definitely go through the uh, exchange program. And luckily uh, I had my wife who gave me the, the gift of life. Congratulations, Ernie, that's an amazing story. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions? I have or one more question is, yeah, um, Lisa's just getting her microsite up and running. Um, so it, let's say five people come forward within, you know, family, friends, acquaintances, and they want to test. Should it just all be done simultaneously? Is there, you know, some kind of insurance problem? You know, do you do two at a time? What do you recommend? I can take that one if you're okay with that. Um, so what happens is when people register, and look at your microsite, right? When you see the button at the bottom that says looking to donate for, right? Just make sure that your potential donors are clicking that button because that's how they start the process on your behalf. In other words, to become a potential donor for yourselves, for the person that's on that microsite, right? So again, it could be, like I mentioned earlier, it could be 10, 20, 30, 40 people that start that process. There's no end to it. It could be, again, and I'll describe real quick the process of that donor intake. First is gonna be a very simple questionnaire. You know, it's a profile information for the potential donor, right? Their name, their age, uh, email, uh, phone number, address, et cetera. After that takes care, that's, that's done, then the next step is gonna be the medical questionnaire, right? There's going to be a questionnaire that takes between 30 to 45 minutes to complete. So that potential donor is going to spend a little bit of time looking through their medical records to respond to the, some of those uh, answers. But again, that's going to be very important so that that person, we can verify that person is healthy enough to potentially become a living donor, right? After they finish that process, the next step is going to be they're gonna be given an order to go to a Quest Diagnostics lab, like I mentioned earlier, to pull their blood work, their pre-workup lab blood work. And again, this can be once they go to the transplant, you know, to the Quest Diagnostics uh, to, be, to get the blood work done, or they could even get a phlebotomist come to their house if they live kind of far from the, from the, from the Quest Diagnostics clinic to, to travel themselves, right? So they can do either way. Once that whole thing occurs, okay, here's the very important part, like I mentioned on my presentation, is the fact that if that person, let's say they live in, like I said earlier, in California or New York, and they're not able to travel all the way to Florida, they can actually pick a transplant center that's NKR participant and get worked up and potentially donate to, on your behalf at that other center, okay? So that's why there's no limit, like back to your question, there's no limit on how many people could start the process. The more, the better for it, okay? And I'm gonna expand upon that further just to take it a little bit more in depth. Yes, encourage as many people to sign up and to fill out those intake forms, like he said, on your behalf. A donor center will typically work up one donor in the actual evaluation, the, the heavy duty physical exam part at a time. Um, and whether you have one person or 25 people, let that medical center review those donors intake forms, their history. We reach out to them, we get more information because um, there could be something that could maybe rule somebody out. So therefore just having one apply at a time could take a little bit of a longer process. Have as many, we'll reach out to them, we'll kind of go through. Somebody may not be you know, in a time spot to where they could donate now. Maybe they're looking to donate in the future and then we could move somebody else kind of in front of them to, to move forward with that actual physical exam first. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? This is a really cool thing. I'm actually surprised you guys don't have more questions. It's a really <laughs> neat way to get your word out, right? 
And, and I just want to emphasize again, Pat and Christine, that the coach is out there to help you, okay? I know for a fact, as I've gone through this many times already, that initially people may not want to share their story or they want to start slow or they just want to mention some general facts about their life. Because again, we've all been, I mean, we know what it is to be asking people for a potential kidney, right? For a kidney, a living donor kidney. And and again, you're welcome to do that. You can go to phase one and only share a few sentences. Later on, you can add to your story and resend for approval. So there's not, you know, you don't have to put everything, all the information all at once. If you're willing to do that, the better, right? Because you're you're throwing all the information out there and the better chances you're gonna to have to find a living donor. But if you feel you wanna go through stages, you're welcome to do that as well. And your coach is gonna walk you through that. Mm -hmm. So all of this and the website and the, and all the assistance and coaching is all free, right? It's all free to the patients, right? So I don't yeah, I don't ahead. see a downside to this. <laughs> there's, um, there's really no disadvantages to your question. Yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody have any questions about how to kind of get started on this? Do you understand how to start? We do. We do. Yeah, I think that we we do. Awesome. I guess yeah. Writing the story for life is really hard. Yeah. Okay. Writing the story is the hardest part, I think. <laughs> your coach yeah. is going to help you though. Yeah. Always rely on your coach. He's going to be able to help you through that process. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right. Lisa, have you accessed your coach? Have you been talking to your coach? I have. He's wonderful. So I have been uh, speaking with him, and a lot of it has to come from for me and those who know me. So we're trying to put together thoughts on yeah. a, a life, a long lived life so far. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. we're, getting there. we're getting there. Nice. Yeah, I think you jumped on this bandwagon pretty early, didn't you, Lisa? We did. I think I made the one of the early 30s. <laughs> they were, yeah, that's they were good. Early 30s. <laughs> yeah. That's really I great because, yeah, I remember you reaching out early on. So, yeah. Really More information we have, the better for, I think, for everybody. You just have to be informed. Recipient and donors alike have to be informed. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, if there are no other questions, I think we're going to wrap up and EJ, thank you so much for doing this. Um, really important stuff. Um, I may reach out to you too to help. Uh, maybe we'll do some of this for the dialysis social workers too, so that they get some education and yeah. they can kind of help their patients too um, get Bad through this. I'm here to help, and it was great and a pleasure to be here. And please don't hesitate to reach out to your coach and reach out to me if you need any help. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, EJ. And you're welcome. I want to thank, thank you. Yeah, I want to thank Christine and Kim too, because they're the ones who put all this together for Mayo with BJ yeah. um, and Sebastian. So, um, thank, thank you. you all very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good. Have a good week. Bye. Thank you.